for all the little sections we got corned up here tonight. The spotlights. Weasel? I'll work with the director for crying out loud. Listen, tonight for the first, and I guarantee you, the last time, Lootfingers, the world's premier punk rock club, is playing host to a cultural event. That's right, a cultural event. Yeah, I know. Some of you out there probably say, oh, way to go, Lou. It sounds like you sold out. Well, I'm not proud of this. Believe me. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty embarrassed. But, you know, uh, these times money talks. You know, everybody needs it. So, uh, anyway, listen. For those of you out there who might be faithful Lou Fingers fans, just sit back and get comfortable because I guarantee you're in for a real snoozer tonight. <laughs> well, don't worry, though. Eventually, we're going to get some real entertainment up here. As a matter of fact, the angry housewives are going to be out here after these suits leave. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're going to be playing that great hit, Eat Your uh, Friggin' Cornflakes. That's the PG version for all you PC cultural folks out there tonight. All right, first, though, we got to sit through this uh, cultural extravaganza, you know? You see, the cultural county. Council County, wait a minute, now, they told me how this goes. The, the Cultural Council of Santa Cruz County is being honored tonight here by the Santa Cruz County Arts Commission. I know, does it sound as redundant to you as it does to me? <laughs> well, anyway, they're being honored here tonight. Let's get this, Artist of the Year. <laughs> I mean, come on, how the heck they ever beat out the fantastic band Pink Vomit? I'll never know, but they did it anyway. So anyway, besides reading this uh, list of long titles, we're actually going to have some cultural entertainment here tonight. I was listening to some of it a little earlier. Yeah, it's pretty bad, you know what I mean? Bad as in good bad, not bad as in bad bad. Mind, never mind, forget it. <laughs> anyway, also we're going to have some presentations. Now don't worry, I told these guys that are running this, they got to get their butts out here by 9 o'clock, so don't worry. Even though we may have some pretty boring <laughs> presentations, hopefully they won't be long boring presentations, okay? All right, now listen, so this is how it's going. Tonight, all the seven largest cultural 
Nonprofits in this town are here. They're all going to be telling you about how great the Cultural Council is and all that stuff so they can like, you know, keep their cash flow in for the next year. <laughs> all right, but that's just, you know, that's their thing. But <laughs> get this now, any one of them, though, goes over three minutes. Any of you guys in your presentations goes over three minutes. Lance Lanier, Lance, hey, Lance, oh, where are you, guy? Stand up, so, there he is, Lance. Now listen, Lance is the executive director of this cultural council thing, right? And he is prepared to cut the grant contract in half with any of you guys who goes up in three minutes, okay? You got that? Now listen, he's really looking forward to this, you know, because Lance and I, we got this deal between the two of us, okay? If any of you local jokels go over three minutes tonight and this show goes past 9.05, I, Lude Fingers, get to MC your sponsor recognition ceremony next year. All right, so you only got yourselves to plan if any of you get like long-winded or anything, okay? All right, so listen, just sit back, enjoy this really exciting evening, and uh, I'll tell you what, Lance, why don't you just come get me when the show's over? I'm gonna go in the kitchen and taste those horse de they got in there, okay? All right, have fun. I'm gonna keep it short because I should only get anywhere near those garbage clippers. Uh, my name is Tim Jackson. I'm from the I'm the director of the Kowomba Jazz Center, and we are one of the sustaining members of the Cultural Council. I'm also a past board member of the council, so I uh, know quite a bit of what goes on there, and it's certainly a fine organization. What I'm gonna just briefly talk a little bit about is an area that I'm not too involved in, but I know it's a it is actually the major program of the Cultural Council. It is called the Spectre Program. It is their Artist in the Schools program where they send out professional artists to the grade schools, uh, kindergarten through eighth, uh, goes all year long, and it's um, where the professional artist comes in and gives the students uh, a certain number of hours uh, per quarter or per year, however they work it of their art. It's uh, interdisciplinary, there's music, there's dance, there's theater, <coughs> storytelling, all kinds of things to uh, keep the children enlightened on uh, all the beautiful cultural forms that, uh, that we have in this world. They have a lot of different components to the uh, program. They've got their classroom workshops, their artist in residence program, multicultural residency projects, uh, different performances, and artistically gifted and talented program and also their Young at Art, which is a, uh, I think it's a one-day festival that happens each spring where there's a big get-together, I believe it's been out at Cabrillo College, where the artists come out and the children get together. It's a very fun, fun day out there. But probably the biggest news for the Spectrum program is that the California Arts Council uh, this year has instituted their first annual Governor's Award for the Arts, and the Cultural Council has been named, or actually, and the Spectre Program has been named a winner in the Organizational Achievement Award in Arts and Education. So I think that that's a great way for the Spectre Program. down to Los Angeles to the awards banquet, and I'm really happy to see that for the program. At this point, I would like to uh, present, announce, introduce a very fine Spectre artist, certainly one of the finest vocalists in this county. Would you please welcome Miss Rita Lackey.
uh, Rebecca was talking about the blues, and I am a sexual artist, and I did the blues in the schools. Oh, with the kids all uh, this year in the schools, and the kids really liked it. So let me try it out on you, and see, see what kind of hand clappers you are. We did a lot of hand claps. So maybe you can help me get the beat, like this, one. Anyway, everybody, come here. I'm the development director for KUSP. The Grants Committee fulfills one of the primary directives of the Cultural Council and its purpose, and that is to provide support to local artists and arts organizations through the Grants Program. The Grants Committee is one of the hardest working committees with the Cultural Council this year, reviewing seven sustaining organizations and 48 project grants proposals. A total of 52 awards were granted this year for over $150,000. This year the earthquake burdened us all and no less the Grants Committee, who was additionally charged with reviewing applications for the Arts Recovery Fund, fondly known as ARF. The Grants Committee reviewed 124 applications totaling $1,216,000. 83 artists, 30 small organizations, and seven sustainers were awarded grants ranging from $95 to $64,000. The Grants Committee, headed by Doug McClellan, literally spends days in reviewing applications, conducting interviews with each candidate, and another few days in evaluations. And part of their determinations are to cover the wide spectrum of the arts, from literature, visual arts, dance, uh, music, and theater and representing the diverse geographic areas of this county from Davenport and San Lorenzo Valley to Watsonville. As a Cultural Council board member, as I am now and have been, a representative of both the smaller organizations and the, for the project grants and the larger organizations for the sustainers, I've had uh, first-hand experience with the Grants Committee for the last 10 years and their devoted efforts. The arts community is indeed indebted to these 10 community members who participate with the Grants Committee, and thank you for your hard work.
Introducing our next artist is the UCSC Gamelon, which is now in its 13th year of programs that encompass not only the haunting Indonesian music, but also uh, the programs of puppet theater and dance. The UCSC Gamelon, our Spectra artist with Kathy Foley, the UCSC Gamelon. Please welcome. Laugh at me. 
Shakespeare Santa Cruz, as well as his own dance. Um, then, after some other remarks, the, uh, Eric Stern will be joined by Ken Williams to do another duet. Ellen and Eric.
You know, the Cultural Council has been wonderful for all of the arts organizations, particularly dance, because we've been so appreciated here in this community, and partly it's because our Cultural Council has made dance part of the arts community and not left it an orphan, as it sometimes is in other communities. But the Cultural Council that we've come to celebrate tonight has opened doors between all the artists in this community and the community at large. That's what the Cultural Council has been about ever since its beginning. Tandy Beal and Company is now almost sweet 16 and five years older than the Cultural Council. We remember the beginning pretty well. We remember all the hard work that went into the action plan and the many, many meetings and the anticipation about fundraising. And we remember also the creation of the Board of Trustees a regular Santa Cruz who's who of hard workers and risk takers and people who then, as well as now, know how to open doors by opening hearts, or maybe it's opening hearts by opening doors. Not only the board, but all the committees where people from business and from government and from the arts sat together, worked together, and things got done. And we all learned and learned from each other we learn how to give, and we learn how to ask. But I also remember a time when we did have some doubts. Would the new kid on the block be competing with us, the existing arts organizations, the ones out there in the field, in the trenches, for very scarce dollars? Uh, but the proof, I think you can see many of the facts in your programs, and I can testify from the records of Tandy Beal and Company that there is no doubt that the positive impact on all of the arts organization is absolutely without doubt. Just as the Cultural Council has gained donors, we gain donors as they gained more contributed income, so we all gain contributed income. 
and we have also discovered that there are many more open doors. So now, it's our pleasure to join together this evening to recognize all some of the many accomplishments of the Cultural Council. As a major force for developing volunteerism for the arts and for educating all of us about the benefits of strong and active community-based boards, and it's our pleasure to join to thank the Cultural Council for creating an environment in which cultural philanthropy is recognized as an important value, not just by a few people, but by a very broad spectrum of the community. And it is our pleasure to join to salute the Cultural Council for setting high standards for the artistic community, standards of excellence, coupled with an understanding of the values of innovation and of diversity. We all celebrate the Cultural Council tonight, and we share with the Cultural Council a commitment to those values that make possible a creative, innovative, vibrant, and economically stable cultural life here in Santa Cruz. And now, we'd like to celebrate the Cultural Council with another dance, a duet, this one, more physical, and it comes from um, a full-length work created by Tandy Beale in 1987 called The Time Falling Bodies Take to Light. It's called it's Duet, and the music is by the co-artistic director of Tandy Beale and Company, John Scoville. It's performed by Ken Williams and Eric Stern. <laughs> Thank you. 
microphone is plan three actually. <laughs> My name is Robert Corns. I'm the chair of the County Arts Commission. would like to welcome you all here this evening to celebrate with us the awarding of uh, our 1990 Artist of the Year to the Cultural Council of Santa Cruz County. Now what kind of artist is the Cultural Council? Yeah. Well the Arts Commission thinks that the Cultural Council is that kind of artist that causes the arts to happen. And so this evening, you've heard already, and I'll hear uh, some more what that means, what the details are. And um, before a few more presentations happen, I'd, I'd also like to recognize some people here tonight who uh, have uh, received this award before. The Cultural Council joins a distingu distinguished group. Uh, their name is on a plaque now that uh, will be hanging at the, cult or at the county building. And other people on this plaque are Tandy Beal. I don't think Tandy could be here tonight. Lou Harrison, who is here. James Houston, who couldn't be here tonight. The Cabrillo Guild of Music. Michael Stamp, the executive director, is here representing the Cabrillo Guild of Music. Maestro George Barati. I know he was coming, but he was going to come late. Perhaps not here. Chuck Hilger, 
He's here. And we're here for the Cultural Council, so please uh, extend a round of applause to them. representing State Senator Henry Mello. Blitzer, representing State Assembly Member Sam Farr. Donna. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Assembly Member Farr, who is in Sacramento this evening and unfortunately can't be here himself. I have a certificate of recognition from the State Assembly. We heard earlier how the Cultural Council has been recognized recently by the Governor and the State Arts Council. <laughs> And it's true that it does have great state recognition. It's also recognized on a national level. When I spoke to Sam earlier and asked him if he had anything special he wanted me to say, he was reminded that as a member of the National Endowment for the Arts Advisory Committee, whenever he goes back to Washington, D.C., 
see the first thing people ask him about is how is the Cultural Council of Santa Cruz County doing? So we're very proud of it, and I'm very pleased that I can present this certificate of recognition. Thank you. Congratulations. Santa Cruz County Symphony and past president of that organization. We're here tonight, as we all know, to honor the Cultural Council. One of the most important things that they do, and one of the toughest things that they do, is to provide venues, to provide performing spaces for those of us in the performing arts to perform. And it's no easy task, as I can attest to. But I want to give you two examples of how the Cultural Council has really made a difference uh, in providing spaces in this county. One is the Fox Theater uh, case in Watsonville. Uh, up until about five years ago, there were no performing, there was no performing going on at the Fox. There was cinema, there was film, but no performing. Years ago, there had been performing, back in the 30s and the 40s, but not in the last 40 to 50 years. Thanks to the Cultural Council and its work with the Pajaro Valley Arts Council, close to $50,000 was raised to bring sprinklers to the backstage area, which the fire people said was absolutely necessary if you were going to make a performing venue out of the Fox, to buy a sound system, which was necessary in order to do some amplification, which is necessary in some performing. And last but not least, the toughest problem of all turned out to be raising the screen. You may not think that was difficult, but that screen had been rooted in place for 45 years. And it took three different firms to come to Watsonville and finally raise the screen. And it was thanks to the coordinated help of the Cultural Council that the right contractor was found to do that. Uh, the Santa Cruz County Symphony is one of the beneficiaries of the fact that the Fox is a performing space. We have just heard today, as a matter of fact, that the Fox is going to be repaired. It will be ready by the end of the summer, we expect. And we'll be back in the Fox. Thank you. to be the back of the Fox for our Christmas concert this year in December. So we're very happy about that and we give thanks to the Cultural Council for their help in making the Fox a performing venue. The second thing the Cultural Council has done that I can think of, I know there are many others in the performing spaces area, but it's what we're doing right now by way of the Cultural Council Performing Arts Commission, which was commissioned by the County of Santa Cruz. The Board of Supervisors have asked the Cultural Council to put together a study committee to come up with a plan for a, perform a major performing arts space or spaces in Santa Cruz County. <clears throat> and the Cultural Council has undertaken that task thanks to the wonderful leadership of Phil Rather, your president. We have a commission of 23 people. We're in our second month of meeting. We've divided into six subcommittees, and we hope to do the definitive, the final, the absolute, the last study on where we should have a major performing arts facility or facilities in this county. So I think it's not an easy task either, but uh, under the cultural count, with the Cultural Council's help, I think we're going to be able to do it. Now, what I have to do most importantly tonight is to introduce the Silver and Strings, which we're going to play for you now. Silver and Strings was founded by Stephanie Gelman Peck, who is uh, a principal flutist, our principal flutist with the Santa Cruz County Symphony. She's also a spectra artist. She's also a very wonderful person. And with her in the Silver and Strings will be William Rusinak, violinist. William was concertmaster for, for the White House Orchestra in Washington, D.C. under four different presidents. And we're fortunate enough to have him as a retired person here in Santa Cruz County and playing the violin in, in, in small groups like this one with Stephanie. Also, uh, <clears throat> a violist is Carol Kutch, K-U-T-S-C-H, Carol Kutch. And the cellist is a longtime Santa Cruzan, a wonderful player who's played with the Santa Cruz County Symphony in the past, Karen Andre. They're going to play the first movement from uh, a Mozart flute quartet, and uh, following that, they're going to play a contemporary suite in three movements by Richard Lawrence, who's a Bay Area composer. So would you help me welcome Silver and String. <laughs>
not only opened their doors to the community at large and to our visitors, but has also opened their doors to each other so that they can get together, see what other people's work is like, whether it's uh, painting, sculpture, jewelry, fiber, fabric, prints, whatever it might be, and have a week weekend or two weekends of sharing and getting together, trading ideas, getting to know each other, then going on and having the forum, thanks to the Cultural Council, of being able to open the doors to the community to come in, support them on an economic basis and on an acknowledgement basis as well. So for that singular event, I know that I have practiced, uh, participated in it in one form or another in all the open studios and intend to again this year. So for that, uh, I, and I know the rest of the artists are going to part of thank you very much. Because you know, we practiced this whole thing last week, and I, and I left and went to New York, thinking coming back, I got back about an hour and a half ago, expecting to find something that is not here. And all I can say is, Brian, where is the art? I mean, we've had performances tonight, we've had all kinds of things, but there's, I see no visual art. I see no sculpture, I see no paintings. Um, something's amiss. But this is somewhat uh, tragic. I did have this piece that I brought back with me, just for a friend who's sitting here and I'm supposed to give to him. However, I can't let this go by. I'm going to have to go over my two minutes and have a little performance here, um, well, of a particular <laughs> kind. Just so we're not left out. Visual art, painting, painting. A little bit of sculpture in a tree or two. for you, one from Orgy Bess. Oh, 
And I think it's a great measure of the respect and admiration that the Cultural Council has throughout the uh, Bay Area and the country uh, that two days after the quake, uh, Lance got a call from Barbara Barkley from the Hewlett Foundation, uh, and she expressed her concern as to what was going to happen with arts organizations in the aftermath of this tremendous devastation, both in Santa Cruz and in the Greater Bay Area. And within four weeks, after the quake, uh, a plan had been put together so that by early December, uh, it was possible for all of us here in the county to meet with representatives of the Bay Area Foundations and the Cultural Council, and they actually had a plan put together in that short amount of time, which was really a tremendous <coughs> achievement, a remarkable achievement, uh, given the fact that uh, they had lost their offices, we had lost our offices, people didn't know where we were situated, the telephone systems were out. Uh, the fact that they could keep their staff together and keep uh, their chin up in the face of this anxiety that we were all experiencing was truly remarkable. And I have to say that if it wasn't for the Cultural Council, many of us, I think, would have probably not been able to cope as well as we did in the arts community. So thank you very much for that. But the aftermath of all of this is that um, through the efforts of the Cultural Council and these Bay Area foundations, over $2, $2 million will be raised to help in earthquake recovery for arts organizations in the Bay Area. And over 600,000 of that is coming and will be coming to Santa Cruz County, which is a remarkable achievement. Over 30% of that money raised uh, for earthquake relief will be coming to our area. And that, again, is because the Cultural Council has the respect and has the admiration and uh, just people, people know that this is an organization they can trust. And um, <coughs> I, I believe that uh, there's over 100 individuals and probably 30 organizations that are going to benefit from this. And we're all very appreciative of that. So I know my three minutes is probably coming up very quickly here. And uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Tito's Samba and the Bungi Dance Theater Project, which is a Spectra Arts group, and they're here to do a dance performance for you.
tell you something. When I was growing up in Africa, when we get together like this, we come like a family, and people come together, we look on the eyes. This is how we solve a problem in Africa. When somebody have a problem, the psychiatry in Africa, it works with the elders, young people, the middle age, together, and we come like this. So I'm so glad to see young people, old people together tonight here. So I want to say, uh, before we dance a little bit, because I would like to have everybody coming and dance tonight, because today is a celebration. So we're going to move the drum, going to be talking to all of us tonight. Let me hear you say like this. Let me tell you, in Africa life, begin like that. And everybody starts smiling. That's right. You have to relax when you come together. Everybody release the tension. That's right. Uh -huh. I know you like the country council doing this for all, all of us in Santa Cruz. Yeah, we come from different directions, different world, and we come to the blue, to live together. Yeah? We survive uh, the best way together with it. Thank you for the culture council again, bringing us together. And yeah, we want this to continue. All the culture to be presented in Santa Cruz. And yeah? young people, all the people can learn together about different culture, because it's very important for today. Thank you again. Don't play some drum. But we dance it. Where I come from. Yeah? As we talk. And he be dancing. Yeah? Yeah. That's what I call
so far? You better get off those chairs. Let's do something here. The drum is here. So let's get off the chairs. Let's do that. Everybody get off the chair, please. Thank you very much. Let's straight out a little bit. Let's straight out, everybody.
Jackson and friends. Let the reception be there. 